Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD and today we're going to be doing some more side quests across the gray sea and also some plot progression which would be pretty pretty nice. Now on screen I actually did live up to my word the sea chart has been filled out a little bit mostly islands we've already been to like Forest Haven, uh, Angular Isles and stuff like that and Tuairu. And also some areas that we're going to be heading to in this episode like Horseshoe Island, Five Eye Reef and Needle Rock Isle. Now, why not I do this? Mostly just for your guys' convenience. I'm not going to be pausing all too often, but I want you to visually see and kind of like know the areas. You know I mean? Anyways, what are we going to do first? Well, we're actually heading west quite a bit because, no, we're not heading to Elsid Island. We're heading to the island directly west of that, which is Horseshoe Island, which will have like a, kind of like a mini game almost for us to play on it, <laughs> even though it's not really a mini game, because mini games and Zelda are sometimes infuriating, because half the time you need to complete them to 100% the game. But aside from that, uh, I kind of want to buy some more of it. I bought two extra Hoi pairs after using one last episode, because what we're going to be doing to get a heart piece does require them. So if you don't have a lot of confidence in your seagull piloting, I recommend getting some there from Beetle. But I think I'll be all right, honestly. But anyways, enough of that. I I'm, I have a problem, man. I'm just like thinking too hard ahead of the future. We are here in Horseshoe Island, finally. And the thing that we have to do here, I think we're gonna need the uh, yeah, we're gonna need the boomerang and the um, the decu leaf. Not really in the use of bait right now, so I'm gonna take that off of my button, my button, my bar, whatever you want to call it. And all right, I kind of want to get here before nighttime, or actually before daybreak, honestly, because there is a blue chew on this island, but it only shows up during the nighttime. I didn't mention that, I don't think, about the blue chews. But yeah, some of them only appear at night. And okay, could the current please take me to where I need to go? That'd be nice. Actually, not current. Well, sea level, you know what I mean. The gimmick of Horseshoe Island is that it is sort of a golf course, more or less, and that was a horrible shot. All we have to do here is we have to throw these chestnuts into the hole. And I'm missing a lot. And then we're going to use the Deku Leaf to take them even farther. The issue is you can't really interrupt. Okay, that should be a straight shot. Eh, there we go. Perfect. So that means I'm guaranteed to get my blue chew. Ooh. The reason I'm stressing the blue chew so much is because once we have the blue chews, we'll have one of the better... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? One of the better potions in the game. Okay, that was kind of a bad shot. <laughs> I don't know where this was that was going. This is one of the more annoying ones, because if you mess up, you have to hope that the stinking the chestnuts just stop moving. Okay, I'm actually going to redirect the wind a little bit. Because I'm not totally confident that from this angle, those chestnuts are going to go where they have to go. So I want them to go directly. What? Hmm. Yeah, I want them to go west a little bit. That seems about right. Yeah, that's like directly where the... The goal is, so come on, one of you has got to get in there. Yes, perfect. So sometimes you don't have to change the wind, sometimes you do, and it's just, you know, like an extra precaution. And hello, Blue Chew. <clears throat> Two shots and he's dead. Pretty easy once you have the boomerang in. Yes, give me my jelly. Give me that jelly. All right, so now we have to change the wind yet again. This time I think we're looking at like, uh, southeast, probably. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, wait. I think that was in the wrong, the worst area. At, no, that actually might be all right. Huh. Well, let's find out. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, did we get it? Yes! Awesome! Okay, so that takes a while. It's just honestly a little bit of luck. But once all three holes have been, um, well, taken care of, we're going to get a treasure chart appear which is very nice and I don't know why that tendril was appearing or that vine but hey submarine people what's going on let's actually see what this guy's talking about oh, oh, oh so beautiful I'm so glad I bought this kaleidoscope so this man likes his kaleidoscope isn't that nice? that's just cool it's always nice for people to have a hobby something for their minds to take off of constant fighting anyways <laughs> this area has a lot of these enemies in it that camera angle is not helping things Neither is that one. I probably should just stop locking on to him. I'm think of it. I personally like to deal with the weaker morphs first. Or actually, more, more. I don't know what they're called. The tiny ones are morph. This guy should lose his wings. Now he's a simple one. One more boomerang shot should do it. Eh. There we go. Eh. So slow. Get off me. Morph. Oh gosh, he's like trying to bait me back in the light so his 
his brethren can respawn. That ain't happening, man. That ain't happening. Okay. Come back over here. Come back. All right. Cool. Cool. There we go. Dead. What? It needs one more hit. No, I'm not going back into the light. That's going to end up... Dungeon. And now it has its wings back. Fan. stinking tastic. Eh. Come on. Come on. Get down. Get down. There we go. Come on. Ugh. Why? And I don't want to kill these stupid morph anymore. I don't like them. Ugh. Okay, there we go. Thank goodness. So that was a slightly... That was honestly not as hard as I made it look. It's just kind of easy. Please get off. I just hate these enemies. They're so annoying. And hey, there's a shirt. Chest is right here. I don't know why I had that giant... <laughs> this digging morph is like... He can't decide where he wants to stay on me. And get off me, man. That's one of the treasure charts for this island. There is actually two to obtain, and I kind of want what's inside here. Okay, just magic and a feather. Feathers aren't really that hard to find, because... Well, honestly, I can just pretty much get them whenever I want. It doesn't really matter. But, yeah, that is not all we have to do here, though. Okay, the morph got off me. Before we go, there is still the chest that I created once we did the golfing minigame. So we're going to set the wind to go east this time. Which uh, not isn't exactly where we need to go next, so I'm going to have to change that when we get on the ship. But a second chest. It doesn't have heart piece on it. It doesn't have rupees on it. Can you guess what it has in it, buddy? I sure can. It is another treasure chart. Yeah, I kind of thought getting the treasure charts was going to be really hard, but... You know, so far, I'm actually doing a hard right job at it. Let's see if I can stick the landing. Oh, we got it. Nice. So now, where we're heading to next, I'm going to just check out the map real quick. We're heading north. However, we do not want to go to this square, because there is another giant octo that is unfortunately too powerful for us to kill at the moment. So we're actually going to head over to Five Eye Reef, and then we're going to make a little diversion to Needle Rock Isle. And then we're going to head to a story event. So we need to go north a little bit. And then we're going to go northeast. So, I'm probably going to go northeast right here. Wait, is this northwest? Crap, I can't read the compass. No, I'm going the right way. All right. So, to the left of us is the giant octo. Somewhere in that water, you know, the seagulls. I'm just going to, just to be on the safe side, go kind of in between the two squares, mainly. So, I recommend... Ooh, the seagulls are right there. Ooh, gosh. Do not go near those seagulls. That's a bad idea. Ooh, okay. Alright, so I think the problem is over, and now we're actually heading to is Needle Rock Isle, which is... Ooh, this could be the easiest hard piece for me to get, or one of the harder ones, and that just looks very enticing, but I want to get a lot done in this episode, and if I keep making stops to get treasure chests, we may not be able to do all of that, and hey, a seagull's coming! Neat! Well, see you later, buddy. <laughs> oh, there's apparently more! Oh! Only a couple, though. No, it started raining again. Wow, there's a lot of seagulls on this island. Speaking of seagulls, that is actually why we bought all those koi pears, because we really need to control some seagulls on this island. Now, this may actually take me a couple tries. I actually don't know. Hopefully, we'll get on the first shot, but you never know. You never know. Anyways, put the koi pear on your head. And now, control the seagull. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying all the way up Needle Rock. Yeah, because there is a switch that we want to activate on top of this island, which will make a chest spawn, which we want, because we're 100%ing the game. Alright, so, so far, no bird, enemy birds have appeared. That's primarily your enemy here. Okay, we're climbing up a little more. Oh, gosh, I think I saw one shadow. Ooh, Nelly, they're on my tail! They're on my tail! We need to climb. We need to climb. I need to trust my instincts. Oh, gosh. Okay, just a little more. Just a little more. Come on, come on, come on. Ugh! I was, I was, I was wrong. I was, oh, there, yep, there we go. Nice. <laughs> a little frantic, a little frantic. And yeah, let's just release the bird so it doesn't die. You poor little guy. Yep, that's how you're supposed to do that. Just basically know how high up you are. And there we go. And hey, another one of the Makar's friends, the Kuroks. Neato. He's on the island too. Oh okay, gosh, I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, side quest, but regardless of that, we get a piece of heart. We need two more. Don't know if we're going to get both of those in this episode. Well, we're going to get one more in this episode, but yeah, I don't really know. But anyways, I think that is pretty much all I wanted to do as far as side questing goes. No, I wanted to do one more thing, but we'll do that after this story event. Which is actually directly north, so actually not necessarily directly north, but you know, man, okay. This place has been marked on our map since we finished the um, Forbidden Woods. It's right there. So we need to go northeast a little bit, and then, oh wait, what the heck is that? Oh, that was, <laughs> that was like something else, but it's just another island. Anyways, so now that we 
have, uh, I think we have, yeah, we have a good, yeah, we might actually get another heart, heart container in this episode. That'd actually be pretty cool. I want my HP to be equal to my magic, because it's very rare in the Zelda series where that doesn't happen, but, you know. Anyways, do you even have, no, you don't even, do you have magic? Do I, yeah, you do. I think. Man, gosh. That's the Zelda game I've played the least, I think, because I never actually have owned it, embarrassingly enough. But anyways, we're here. Look! Link, do you see it? What happened to this place? Hmm. Oh, yeah. oh gosh, it looks like a wreck. Goodness, what on earth happened? This great fish isle. This is apparently where the last pearl is supposed to be, and what is the meaning of this? This island, it is. We are too late. I knew we were too pro <laughs> Yeah, I kind of wasted time a little bit there. My B... A great water spirit named Jaboon once lived here, but no sign of him remains. Maybe the crap is calling me. Hey, it's Quill! Gosh, he flew all the way for you from Dragon Roost. That's quite a ways. Well, then again, he did fly to Outside Island. I'm sure he took some breaks on the way, you know. Hey, Quill, what's going on, man? You delivering some mail? There's a mailbox here. So, you're here. I've been looking for you. Are you a chance seeking the great spirit Jaboon? I'm sorry to report that Jaboon can no longer be found here. Just look at how this place has been torn to pieces. I suppose this, too, is the work of the Shadow in the Forsaken Fortress. But fear not, Jaboon was able to flee this island before it was attacked. He is in a safe abode now. Would you like to guess where that abode may be? Sure. On the island where you were born on Outset. Really? Well, crap, we were just there. Dang. Yet even if you were to go to Outset Island now, you would not be able to see Jaboon. The cave where he hides is sealed with a mighty stone slab that repels all who try to pass it. Interesting. I must apologize, Link. I thought if anyone would know of the whereabouts, it would be the pirates. I told them this tale without so much as a thought for the consequence. Oh, goodness. That isn't good. What if they attacked a boon? Dang it. Why'd you stink and talk? Uh, it's alright, though. Better search for the pirates on Windfall Island. What an eerie isle this is. Everywhere else boasts clear skies and calm seas, but this place suffers under dark clouds and rain. Falu must have been right when he asked me to bring the word of Jabu to you. He called this island cursed. Dang. So apparently the guy in Forsaken Fortress cursed it. Yeah, I guess we better start heading out here. Thanks, Quill, for the info. So, we know where Jaboon is now, but how the crap are we going to get to him? Well, maybe the answer to that question will lie on Windfall Island. So, yeah, my bad. We're killing I hey, I got a lot of health, though. But Jaboon kind of like, died. Not really died. It was island's kind of destroyed. So, our next destination is Windfall, but before we do that, there's actually a heart piece to be gotten on this island. Not much else, though. Wait, no, I think there's a couple of things, but we'll do those. A little bit later in the game, I'm going to turn my sail off and then do that. There we go. So, what we're searching for now is kind of like a spiral island-ish thing, which is actually right here. And Beetle's all the way out here. Beetle, the island's cursed, man. You gotta get off here. Goodness. I mean, it's crazy. I'll do anything to get a sail. Let's actually get out of our boat, and here we are, back in Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> not really. This kind of reminds me of Spiral Island. Or not, Spiral Mountain. Not Spiral Island, what the heck. It's kind of funny like that, but yeah. We're going to be climbing this up a little bit, and then using uh, our Deku Leaf to get across to that little cliff. You can probably just barely see it, but that's where we're heading to next. So we need to... Oh, there's actually a Kurok on top of here. I totally forgot about that. But we're going to head um, north... West, I believe, yeah. That should be the correct, and jump off, and whoa! Alright, you should have more than enough magic to get there, even if you did not get the magic upgrade, but why wouldn't you get the magic upgrade? So easy to get. All you gotta do is find the seagulls. Anyways, so now that we get to take care of, let's get our heart piece, and only one more heart piece to get, and we get a heart container. Hot diggity dang. And I think once we get that heart container, that'll pretty much be all I want to do in this episode, because I want to save, like, the next little side quest thing for next time, and I'm going to set the wind to go back the other way, which should be, yeah, southeast this time, the complete opposite, just so I can get back to the uh, King of Red Lions a little bit faster. Okay. All right. We should find some magic upgrades in between episodes, so it really doesn't matter if I waste my deck of weave magic here. Okay, I just win the rest of the way. And all right, so now that we have um, that heart piece, where do we want to go next? Let's see. I think we want to go east. Yeah, so let's hop on a thing. And I'm trying to I'm trying to get better at like reading the compass to where we don't have to like pause the menu every time. I'm trying to make a conscious decision. Most I, I talked about this a little bit in the um, Forest Haven. I'm trying to make this let's play a lot more enjoyable for you to watch than necessarily convenient for me. But that's whatever. 
It's the tiny little things that matter. Anyways, right over here is Cyclops Reef. I think that's what it's called. There's like one dot in the reef. That's what it's called, Cyclops Reef. But we can't really do much here. At least not right now. And oh gosh, pirates. Ooh. Man, that's a lot of treasure over there. <laughs> Holy cow. But yeah, Six Eye Reef should have the submarine that I'm searching for. And then we can head straight to Windfall. And then what happens in Windfall, we will take care of in the next part. Because it's actually kind of lengthy and we've been doing a little bit of side questing. And stuff like that. So, you know. Is that Rock Spire or is that Needle? I don't actually know. And it's too dangerous to go any further. Wait, am I going west? I'm going to be so mad if I was going west. Oh my gosh. I'm stupid. Holy crap. <laughs> this is a site. Wait, is that. A this is three reef eye. Gosh dang it. Man, I'm a stinking dingus, dude. Goodness. Anyways. So, we have to, unfortunately, go the uh, com complete other direction. Because I wasn't reading the compass correctly. So, yeah. Where I'm actually supposed to be sailing to is east of Great Fish Isle. We have to go over two spaces. We're, yeah, right there is where we're supposed to be heading. And, oh, goodness, you, no, you're not hitting me. And there is Cyclops Reef. That's where I went to go. I do. Because there's a submarine and a very easy horror piece that we can get. We just got to deal with some moblins, which won't be very difficult at all. Man, these seas sure are rough, dude. Personally, I've been on a boat like... Well, I've been on a cruise ship before, and that was kind of rough. But I didn't really get seasick. I kind of just got flinged around everywhere. <laughs> it wasn't really like I was going to have to row up or anything. I don't really get seasick that often. It's kind of just like, I don't know. I've been on a boat a couple times. I guess it's because, I don't know, you swim so much, you're around the water a lot. I don't want to sound, that's like this most surfer thing. Yeah, I don't get seasick, man, because I'm one with the water. I don't surf, guys, at all. It's never my forte. I have to wear glasses. I mean, I always wanted to do it, but I never could. I do a lot of things, but my glasses were impairing me. It's mostly stuff retaining the water that I want to do. And, all right, where the dump is this submarine? Let me find this. Oh, there it is. Actually, no, it's not. It's just a normal pirate ship. I think it is actually a little bit south, though. Let's actually be on the lookout for this. Thankfully, it's thundering, so we can actually have a little bit of illumination. Okay. I think I'm actually... Yeah, I'm going off the square. This is the area in which we are looking for. So, let's see. Oh, was that it? I think that was it. Yeah, because it it's surrounded by rafts. So, that might be it. Come on. There it is. Yes, yes. Let's have the last heart piece that we want. Goodness, if I really think about it, I had. <laughs> I remember when I first got my glasses, I was in the first grade and I was asking my mom what color the grass was because I couldn't see it. And it was just like, oh my gosh, he's blind as a bat, man. <laughs> it's just so funny to think of that. And yeah, I've had them since, uh. Yeah, I've had them ever since. I, I wear contacts now, they're just. I don't know. Once I've worn the glasses for so long, it's just like, uh, it's just. I don't know. It's annoying. They're always just sitting on your head, and you also don't have as much peripheral vision. And you know, that's just the way I see it. Why am I talking about my glasses inside of, of this sub? I don't know. I'm weird, guys. You guys, everyone knows that. They've been on my channel for more than 10 seconds. Just kidding. I'm gonna backstab this guy a little bit. Unfortunately, he doesn't do more damage. Oh, well, kind of makes him stunned a little bit, so that's kind of cool. It is my goal this time not to get punched by any demoblins. Can I do that? Oh gosh. Well, hopefully, I will if I keep utilizing the boomerang in the proper way. And come on, come on, one more to go. He's just like, All right, Chris and Charlie, what's going on there? Oh, gosh, it's that green guy. <laughs> and he's gonna be destroyed like his comrades. Don't punch me, don't punch me every time, every stinking time. Oh my gosh, it's actually, oh my god, how did that miss? Uh, I know how it missed, I'm just still embarrassed. Guys, dang it. Why is that with me and Moblins, man? I just, I don't know. I guess I just spam my attacks too much. <laughs> oh, he punched me twice. Morphs! Get out of here! No one likes you! Ugh. Oh my gosh, Morphs. Okay, you're not getting that attack off. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. Goodness. Drop some stinking skull necklaces. And now that all three of those Moblins have been defeated, we are gonna ugh, get off of me. Good. All right. Now that all three of those moblins have been vanquished, we should get our next heart piece, which will resort in our next heart container. Which I'm pretty thinking happy about. And I think my Pro Controller battery is dying, so I have to charge that relatively soon, but hey, it's alright. It's not a big deal. And there we go! We got a new piece of heart, which results in our new heart container. Yay! <laughs> We're very close to having, um, ten hearts, which is going to be pretty cool. So. It's gonna be pretty nice. Honestly, Zelda is, or this Zelda is the easiest Zelda. I don't care what you say. This is, combat wise, this is the easiest game, like, 
I beat this game three hearts so many times. Just it's just so easy. I mean, Ocarina of Time has a lot more combat in it, but it's not really hard combat either. But you know what I mean. Anyways, now that's taken care of, we go directly north, and we should be at Windfall Island. Should be pretty nice. Wait, actually, let me look. So I don't mess up again. Yeah, that's north. Okay, so I'm actually going to um, sail there in between episodes. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. We got a lot of side quests done. We checked out what was happening at Great Fish Isle and who we're kind of responsible. And we have a next tip to go to, well, Windfall Island and search for the pirates. Which will be taken care of in the next episode. So see you guys then. Bye.